Well, you guys asked for it, so here it is. In my last video about how to engrave tumblers with a Glowforge, which I'll put right here just in case you missed it and want to check out after this video, I received a lot of requests for how to add the conical warp to designs so your designs go on straight rather than curving up at the sides so that your designs look like this rather than this. I'm Stephanie and I've been running an online handmade business, ILYB Designs, since 2014. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a little bit of crafters ADD. So if you take a look at my website, you'll see I make a variety of different types of custom items. So I created this channel so I can share with you my crafty tips and tricks and provide you with inspiration for projects you can complete at home. So come craft with me. And as always, consider subscribing to my channel and like and comment on a video when you see something you like. Now, let's get on with today's video. So working with this pint glass today, now this will work on many different kinds of glasses. I'm just using the pint glass because it is has a definite wider top than it does bottom. And that is what the conical warp is made for. For this, you really just need a tape measure is really all you need. Now I have a set of calipers just because I have that. Um, I use it when I'm using my Glowforge. That is not necessary. Really all you need is a tape measure. So you need to measure the top of your glass, the widest part. So you're gonna take your tape measure and just put it there in the center. And that is like three and a quarter. Or you can get a super exact measurement with the calipers. And then you're gonna do the same with the bottom. So two and a quarter, or with the calipers, it just gets it to the exact. And then you also need to measure the top to the bottom. And that is about five and three quarters, or with the calipers. Okay, so now I'm in the Silhouette Studio Business Edition software. That's the version that I use. This conical warp feature is available in Designer Edition Plus and Business Edition. And before I go any further, I just wanna say this is not a sponsored video. I just love the Silhouette software. It is so user-friendly and so robust. It can do so much stuff. Now there's a free basic version that allows you to do a lot, but you are limited in features. And you do not have to have a Silhouette machine in order to use this software. You can uh, use this software to design things and print from your printer. It does just about everything that I know of that other design softwares do. Um, and it is a very affordable price. So I highly recommend it if you need a very user-friendly and affordable software to use. I'll leave a link in the description box to a chart showing the prices and differences in the software editions just in case you're interested. And again, I get nothing out of suggesting the software. I just love it. So here's the design that I'm gonna work with today. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> so right now it has nothing done to it. It is just, um, it's just the design and I have sized it to the size that I need to go on my pint glass. So I'm gonna leave it the size that it is. And I'm gonna come over here down on this side panel and you see this little, um, kind of like a little squishy grid. Click on that and that brings up the warp panel. Now there are several different types of warps you can do and I'll just run through them real quick just to show you the different things you can do. You always have to have your design selected with this bounding box around it. And then over here I'm gonna select warp selected shapes and that brings up this funky little grid with all these little nodes. Now if you just put your uh, mouse on there and pull on those nodes, you can modify your design in all different ways. So obviously that's not what we want done to this design, but that just shows you how you can stretch it and pull it and do all sorts of crazy things to it. Then if you're like, oh gosh, no, that is not what I want. You just go over here, restore original shapes, and it takes you back to your original design. This is another super cool feature, the ABC one. They have all these templates already um, ready for you. So you just click on it and look, it takes your design and puts it like in those different um, stretches it in all those different ways. This is cool. It's like the, if you like the Star Wars um, writing, then that's that. 
So it just depends on what design, what look you're going for. See, there's all of these different ways that you can do it. Pretty cool. And then again, okay, nope, that's not what I want. So you just come up here and restore original shapes and you're back to your original design. But what we're going to use today is this one that looks like a pint glass. That's the conical warp. So click on that. It brings up a picture of what looks like pretty much like a pint glass. Oh, and again, we have to do this conical warp selected shapes. Kind of an extra step that's a little annoying to me, but it is what it is. All right, I'm just going to move this to the center. But when I, when I click on that, then it brings up this little uh, conical shapey thing here. Um, you like how I use technical terms? I don't know what it's called, but that thing is around your design and the design's in the middle. Now, I don't know if you can see, but it has actually warped this design a little bit. I can see a little bit of a curve here on this line. And it is just uh, warping it based on what these measurements are showing over here. Now, that is most likely not the measurements of whatever you're using. So we're gonna fix that because we're gonna get the actual measurements of our glass. Two different ways you can change the measurements. You can pull on these little nodes here and if I stretch, nope, that's, <laughs> I didn't get it. Okay, there, it's letting me do that. So you see, I can make the, the glass short, really short, like a shot glass or something. And then if it would let me, it's not letting me, okay, there we go. All right, or you can make it wider like that and it's showing you the actual measurement up here. But I don't like, I don't do it that way. I actually come down here and I type in the precise measurements. So this one right here, it shows you the little arrow going across the top of the glass. So that is the top of your glass. And the measurement that I got for that was 3.4835 and then enter and then it changes it. This one here is the bottom of the glass. You see the little arrow down there at the bottom. So I'm gonna type in that measurement was 2.3885. This measurement is the top, from the top to the bottom of the glass. And that measurement was 5.8375, enter. And it has warped my design based on those three measurements that I just put in. Now there's two more things down here. This one here that says ABC and it's kind of, it, it's got like a little curved arrow. That is the size of your entire design. If you did not size it to fit your object before you started doing this, you would maybe want to play around with that. I know mine is the exact size I need, so I'm not going to mess with it. But you do not want to resize it by pulling on uh, the bounding box when you're in the conical warp. You would want to use this slider right here. But I'm leaving that because I know that is exactly how I want it. But I do need to mess with this one here, the ABC. Basically, that just represents your design. And so the arrow's up and down. So you see, this is really down near the bottom. So this would be, if I was to put it on the bottom of my glass, then this would be warped appropriately. But then look, I'm gonna move this little slider here, and that's gonna move my design up or down. As I get up, you see how IPA is stretching out and curving more? because now it's going along the curve of the top of the glass, which is different than when you're down here. So watch how it's gonna, I'm gonna move it back down and you'll see how it keeps modifying it. And the curve, the warp is less and less as I get down towards the bottom because the warp of the glass is less as you get down to the bottom. But I want mine in the middle, so I'm just going to adjust it right about there. That looks to me to be about the middle of the, um, this little cone thing. So now I've got it just how I want it. You can come over here and click apply, but I will caution you if you do that, you cannot make any changes. It sets the design in that conical warp and you can't change it at all. So I don't like to do that. I don't like the finality of that. So if you just come over here and just click anywhere, that little cone shape thing goes away and you still have your warped design. Then you can move this around. Well, every time you click on it, it appears, but when you click off, it disappears, that part is not gonna cut, so I would I always move my designs up here to the corner whenever I'm cutting. And so you see how it's curved here a little bit? So it's gonna cut like that, and then when we put it on the glass, it's going to look straight because this program magically fixed it exactly how it needs to be. Love it, makes it easy. Here they are side by side. Now this one is the one that I cut without adding the conical warp. And you can see this line over here, it kind of starts going up and it just, it's a little bit distorted. This is the one with the conical warp. 
and it even adjusted the sizing like you can see uh, the name down here it actually looks a little smaller than this one here it is just made the design so that it fits the shape of the glass because these designs in the program were the exact same size the way I cut them. It's just this one over here, this has the conical warp and this one does not. I just wanted to share with you a different design that made um, the difference a little more accentuated. So this was a rectangular design and as you can see this one here on the left does not have the conical warp and so you can see how the design is curving up. If I turn the glasses to the side, you can see that even more so, where this one here, it's um, all slanted along the side of the glass, where this one, it is straight up and down just like it should be. And as I just turn them around, you can see the same thing happens on the other side. And the design just fits on there nice and straight like it should be. I hope this video helped you understand how to use the conical warp feature in Silhouette Studio. Now I did receive a request on how to do this using Inkscape, but unfortunately I'm not familiar with that software. I do everything in Silhouette, but I'm curious, is there a similar feature in other software? Please share your expertise in the comments below if you know how to do this using other software. And if you're interested in seeing future Silhouette Studio tutorial videos like this, please comment below what you'd like to see. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video, so see you later.